Hi, it's Ali here, Salon Director from The Head Gardener in Inverness. Talking about cancer is never easy, but unless we're open and honest about it, how can we learn from each other and most importantly support each other? Personally, I love this podcast. Every so often there'll be a little nugget that will just smack you in the face and you just think, whoa, right, that resonates. I think Penny is an amazing storyteller. She's utterly honest and yes, sweary, but cancer makes you a bit sweary. I'm really proud to be the sponsor of Lump and I hope you get as much from it as I do. But don't forget to like it, rate it and share it. And over to Penny. Cheat. Tears pour down my face as David drives us to the shop. I should be excited, elated. A small quiet corner of me is. But right now, right at this very second, I'm broken hearted about what this trip and this purchase represents. For three brief weeks, I had a breakthrough. Lockdown eased and the local gym opened and I nervously signed up for a Pilates class. The Polish instructor had us stretching and working our muscles over giant inflatable balls, and to my surprise, although I was braced for resistance, my body and back said, yes. The push and pull of the muscles round my scars felt good. More than good. I held my breath for the inevitable fallout the next day, for my body to curl back in on itself and complain. But the complaints didn't come. Boyd, we went swimming, and I managed ten lengths of the pool before my back started to gurn. I think I've really turned a corner, I grinned to my physio. I'm finding me again. And I was. It felt like holding a black cloth up to the light and seeing chinks of light and colour start to spill through holes and patterns in the fabric. My body was being lit up by rays of activity, pockets of moments in each day where I thought, This will do. I can live like this. We pushed it further, and I booked us a badminton court. It seemed obscenely ambitious. Could I really seriously get my body to play badminton again? Four years ago, during a winter when the weather stopped us from putting in the cycle training we were needing for a seriously big challenge in the spring, David and me ended up playing badminton together two or three times a week. He never made it easy, never gave me any quarter, and I always lost. But we laughed and sweated and loved it. So we dusted off the rackets and shuttlecocks, and good memories. And both of us rusty, David stiff after a hundred-mile cycle the day before, and me stiff because even on a good day half my body feels encased in concrete. We stumbled and giggled our way round the court. I hardly dared believe that this was all possible, and it continued to be possible. As one week turned into two, into three, I managed to get to more Pilates and do more swims, and we played more games on the court. I delighted in the fact that we were back doing stuff together, and that David still didn't play me any easy shots, never gave a single point in a single game if he could help it. And I started to believe that I really was on some kind of home straight, that I'd served my time and now I could be rewarded with recovery. With my departure from the BBC imminent, I started to know I was going to be okay, that I was going to have the energy and physical capability to grasp the future. No, life wasn't going to be the same. My body was always going to be changed and compromised, That was the price of being well. And it was a high enough price. Then, on the Sunday at the end of those three glorious weeks of activity and action, my body said, enough. Playing badminton with our friends Mike and his family, my body tightened and twisted and refused to unlock. I limped round the court, getting slower and stiffer and more awkward, Picking up the shuttlecock was an effort. Hitting a return was an effort. Christ, it felt like breathing was an effort. By the following Tuesday, I was exhausted by it. 
I found it increasingly difficult to sit for any length of time at my computer. Sciatica had joined in and nerve pain was dancing down my right leg. Restless and miserable, I climbed the hill above the house to see if a walk could help. The bracken, which had grown above head height in the summer months and made the badgerlands all but inaccessible, was dying back to a rich rust. It was lovely to be back out on the hill, picking my way along through the deer paths, finding myself astonished that seven months had already passed since we moved to this astonishing place. Then, as if I needed reason to love the place more, I saw a mass of deep yellow chanterelles pushing through the mossy woodland floor. Later that afternoon, I returned with David and a basket, and we foraged for as much gold as we thought we could eat. But much as I clung to the joys of collecting wild mushrooms and living here, my grief at the state of the muscles in my back and body lingered. I cried when the physio tried to massage me back to something vaguely normal. I dutifully obeyed everyone who kept saying I should listen to my body, and I stopped going to Pilates and I stopped swimming and continued quietly crying whenever David and B weren't around. Eventually, after ten days of feeling like I'd been buried alive, my back started to ease again and my movements gradually became less stiff and forced, so the process of scratching around for me again in amongst the debris this disease has dumped on my life restarted. Eating breakfast at my friend Bruce and Joe's bar Joe suggested I have a quick spin round the block on her electric bike. It seemed a serendipitous suggestion. Earlier in the week, I'd caught up with Al, who'd suggested I come and have a try of some e-bikes they got to help people recovering from cancer. Then he said, I wish I'd got mine sooner. It's changed everything. I wanted to say no. I wanted to push away the idea of sitting on that bike wanted to sink into my feeling that it would be cheating. But with Al's words so fresh in my head, I gave in and gave Joe's bike a go. And so now, only hours later, here we were in the car, driving to the bike shop to buy an electric bike. I lean my head against the window and I cry. Why does this feel so much like defeat? This bike will allow us to get back out cycling together, to share something we love. I can stop feeling so sad each Saturday when I watch David head off with the cycle club. Now I'll be able to join him. With any luck, the e-bike will allow me to cycle fast enough to comfortably keep up, because I've been worrying that even when I can get on my bike without my body buckling, I'll be so unfit and slow that riding with me will be torture. And once I'm fit enough, well enough, I can turn off the power. But every time I picture myself on an e-bike, I flinch. There's no getting around it. It feels like I've failed, that I'm accepting that this is as good as I can get, that I'm stuck at this point. It hurts so much, and I feel so fucking angry again that this has happened to me. I hate this disease so much. I want to hit out at it pummel it, show it how furious I am at its stealing great chunks of who I am. Maybe it's because I'm coming up against something I used to do so much of that it feels more difficult. I find it so hard to push away the memory of my being able to cycle many miles. I know that by comparison now I come up so very short. This new bike will force me to confront what I was once capable of, force me to face myself in the mirror. But I also know that to sit around waiting to be well enough to cycle is also conceding some kind of defeat to my cancer. So I dry my face on my sleeve, take a breath, and follow David into the shop to buy a way of moving forward. Lump is sponsored by Ali McRitchie and the fantastic team at the Head Gardener Hair Salon in Inverness. Without them, it simply wouldn't be possible. So a massive thanks to them for all their support. If you like Lump, make sure you tell the team when you're next in the salon and they'll give you a free gift. Coming up in the next episode. 
even though I know this story is finished. There's that curious thing that happens with a great book or adventure. Part of you wants to hurtle to the end and throw yourself at the empty space beyond. The other part of you wants to drag your feet, take time to savour all the best bits. Lump is written and presented by me, Penny Stewart, and produced by Adventurous Audio. Adventurous Audio.